Absalom was the third son of King David in the Bible and the leader of the Great Rebellion, which defeated his father in the late 11th century BC. Absalom's alienation from David began when the king was unable to take decisive action to punish Absalom's brother Amnon, who raped Absalom's sister Tamar. Two years later, Absalom took revenge by killing Amnon. Absalom went into exile for three years under the protection of his grandfather, King of Geshur, and superficially settled with David two years after returning to Jerusalem. He quickly became popular and was considered the most handsome man in the whole the kingdom. A promising and a handsome leader, Absalom rebelled against David from the former capital Hebron, using a growing support base outside Jerusalem. Then he expelled the weakened king from Jerusalem and chased him east. However, following the deliberately unwise advice of his false advisor Hushai, he neglected to attack David when the fleeing king was defenseless, giving David time to cross the Jordan River, replenish and choose a favorable battlefield. Absalom, born in Hebron, when David, who ruled only Judas, was still fighting Saul's house, was listed as David's third son. His mother was Maka, the daughter of King Talmai of Geshur. Absalom faced a serious crisis after David united the kingdom and settled the royal family in Jerusalem. His sister Tamar was raped by David's elder son Amnon. Amnon temporarily loved her, but after he defiled her, he hated her. Absalom comforted and protected the distraught Tamar and waited two years to avenge her shame. But the king apparently did nothing to punish the criminal. He then invited Amnon and some other princes to a feast of Baal Hazor near the Ephraim border during the sheep sharing celebration. After Amnon drank a glass of wine, Absalom ordered his servants to kill him. Absalom sought evacuation with his maternal grandfather, King Talmai of Geshur, as mentioned in Joshua 12.5. David longed for him, but it took three years for Absalom to return to safety in Jerusalem. This is mainly due to the influence of his cousin, the commander-in-chief of the army, Joab. Upon returning to his capital, Absalom lived in his own house, but was still unable to enter before the king. During this time, he engaged in raising a family of beautiful Tamar named after his three sons and one daughter, Absalom's sister. He gained a national reputation and his beauty became a legend. But two more years later, Absalom had not yet met his father, King David, in person. Joab did not want to sue the king on behalf of Absalom and refused to meet the prince. Absalom decided to take desperate steps and set fire to Joab's vineyard, which he later explained to him, Why did I come from Jeshur? It would be better if I was there. Well then, I want to see the king's face. But if I owe something, tell him. Let me kill you. This unorthodox diplomatic strategy proved successful when David received Absalom and greeted him with a kiss after Joab intervened in the king again and the prince paid homage. For the next four years, Absalom hinted himself to a remote tribe by meeting travelers to the capital, empathizing with their dissatisfaction and promising justice to them. After placing what he felt was a good basis for his plan, he asked the king for permission to go to Hebron, the former capital of David, to fulfill his religious vows there. Absalom sent a messenger to Hebron to provoke all Israel. The northern tribes and most of Judas stood beside him, proclaiming, Absalom is the king of Hebron. Primarily protected by mercenary forces and royal Joab, Absalom's strategy was so effective that the king decided to leave Jerusalem and flee to the desert across Kidron Valley. The priest who secretly pleased allegiance to David remained in Jerusalem and his sons Jonathan and Ahimas acted as his spies. Absalom soon arrived at the capital and entered the capital without resistance. Already anointing Ahitopel's council, he publicly demonstrated his kingship by having sex with David's concubine in front of all Israel on the roof of the places, as mentioned in 2 Samuel 16. Retreating, David wisely took precautionary measures to instruct his advisor Hushai to infuriate Absalom's court and destroy it. To this end, Hushai persuaded the new king to ignore and use Haithopal's advice. Informed by a spy on Absalom's plan, David took this important opportunity to cross the Jordan River with the coveted help of a Gilead and Ammonite allies in preparation for a conflict. The decisive battle took place in the wood of Ephraim. David wisely chose his land because Absalom's army was completely routed 
and the forest of the day took more lives than the swan. Despite his betrayal, the king did not want to kill his son and ordered the general to be kind to the young man Absalom for me. Absalom himself, with his long famous hair, found his lock helplessly caught on an oak tree branch. Informed on the situation by one of the soldiers, Joab acted without hesitation. He pierced Absalom's heart with three spears struggling with branches. The owner of Joab's armor then moved to finish his work. Absalom's death did not end the rebellion of the northern tribes rallying in this cause. A Benjamin leader named Bikri's son, Sheva, soon appeared and revived the rebellion with the motto, We are neither David nor Jesse's son. Once again, everyone in Israel left David to obey Shaba. But Judas was almost loyal to the king. The king was not for glory, but he returned to Jerusalem, guarding his dirty concubine, never visiting and treating him as a widow. David refused to forgive Joab for killing Absalom and placed Absalom's own general, Amasa, as the head of the army and fought against Sheba's army. However, with constant determination, Joab seized the earliest opportunity to kill the rivals and led an army to siege Abel Beth Maka, a city believed to be associated with Absalom's mother's family. So the wise woman finally persuaded the locals to turn their backs on Shiva and their heads on Joab. Joab victoriously returned to Jerusalem and regained his position as commander-in-chief. He continued with his work for the rest of David's life but made the mistake of helping the throne Adonai when the old king was dying. David revenges his formal general from the tomb when the young King Solomon executed the order of David's deathbed to assassinate Joab shortly after Solomon's ascension. In legacy, it was said that David was overwhelmed by the death of his son and ordered to build the large cairn where Absalom fell. Another monument near Jerusalem was built by himself during his lifetime to perpetuate his name because Absalom did not have any surviving boy. The later tomb Yad al-Shalam was named after him, but none of these monuments survived.